Hello, this is Kauri Kaur and today's topic is Markets with Imperfect Competition Oligopoly Part 2. In Part 1 of this manuscript, we discussed in detail the duopoly models developed by Konu and Bertrand, the concept of reaction curves and their application in achieving equilibrium in oligopoly markets was also explained in Part 1. In this part of session, we explain the concepts of quantity leadership price leadership and simultaneous quantity setting that are used in oligopoly models. Non-collusive stable equilibrium and the working of collusive cartels are also discussed in this part. Now let us begin this session with quantity leadership. The situation of quantity leadership occurs when the firms compete on quantity. This happens when one firm decides to sell specific quantity of a product first and the second firm takes quantity related decision considering the choice of the first firm. The firm that takes decision first is known as the quantity leader and the firm, second firm is called the quantity follower. This type of leader followers competition is called as a Stackelberg competition. The Stackelberg leadership model is a strategic non-cooperative game in which the leader firm moves first and the follower firms move subsequently. A German economist Heinrich Perer von Stackelberg has explained his model in his publication Market Structure and Equilibrium in 1934. The Stackelberg competition is a model of imperfect competition. According to Stackelberg, quantity leadership prevails when there is one dominant firm and other firm is either a small or a less important in the industry. Stackelberg model represented a turning point in the study of market structure particularly in the analysis of duopoly because it provides different collusions that the Kurnu and Burton models. The assumptions of Stackelberg model are first is there are two firms in the industry where one firm is the leader and the other firm is the follower. Second both firms compete by making their choice or quantity. Third is both the firms manufacture a homogeneous product. Fourth is price in the market depends on joint output. Stackelberg model is a sequential game, not simultaneous as in Korno model. Stackelberg equilibrium is explained with the use of reaction curves shown in this figure. Firm 1 is the leader who decides his reaction curve R1 to sell his product. Firm 2 is the follower who decides his reaction curve R2 considering the decision of the leader. At equilibrium, firm 1 abandons his reaction curve R1. Instead, he observes his rival's behavior along his reaction curve R2 and then chooses point S, which is best for him as the highest isoprofit curve is just tangent to R2. Choosing any other point on R2 means a lower profit for the leader. Thus, Stackelberg equilibrium is a perfect equilibrium of the game. In this game, the leader has decided not to behave as in the Kurnu model. However, it is not certain whether the leader would produce more and make more profits than the follower because the production will be larger for the firm with lower marginal cost. Total production will be greater and prices lower but player 1 will be better off than player 2. This highlights two aspects. First is importance of accurate market information while defining a strategy and second is interdependence of decisions when there is market leader and a follower. Major differences between the Stackelberg and Kurnu models of duopolies are first is Stackelberg's model is a sequential game while the Kurnu model is a simultaneous game. Second, in Stackelberg duopolies, quantity sold by the leader is greater than the follower while in Kurnu duopolies, the quantity sold is the same for both the firms. Next topic of today's discussion is price leadership. Price leadership takes place when one firm sets the price and the other firm follow it. It comes into existence either through tacit or formal agreement. Since formal agreement to establish price leadership is illegal, it is established by informal and implicit understanding. This is done in an informal meeting and among the competing oligopolists in which a price leader is selected and the other firms agree to follow him in fixing their prices. Types of price leadership under different situations are First, there is a price leadership by a low cost firm. Second, there is a price leadership by a dominant firm. Third, 
there is an expert leadership where a relatively older and more experienced firm performs the role of a leader to protect the interest of all and lastly there is exploitative price leadership by a large or dominant firm who follows aggressive price policies. Economists have developed different models for price output determination under price leadership. Now let us discuss price output decisions under leadership by a low cost firm and leadership by a dominant firm. First is price leadership by low cost firm. Price output determination under price leadership by a low cost firm assumes that cost of production of one firm is lower than that of the other. Second, both firms produce a homogeneous product. Third is each firm has equal share in the market. Price and output determination under price leadership by a low cost firm is explained in this figure. Each firm faces a demand curve DD which is half of the total market demand curve DD. MR is the marginal revenue curve of each firm. ACA and MCA are the average and marginal cost curves of firm A and ACB and MCB are the average and marginal cost curves of firm B. MCA and ACA curves of firm A lies below the MCB and ACB curves of firm B because it is assumed that the cost of production of firm A is lower than firm B. Firm A will maximize profits by setting output OM and setting price OP since at output OM its marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue MR. Firm B will maximize profits when it fixes price OH and sells output ON. The profit maximizing price OP of firm A is lower than price OH of firm B. Since firm A and firm B produce homogeneous products, they cannot charge two different prices. As the profit maximizing price OP of firm A is lower than that of the profit maximizing price OH of firm B, firm A will set the price and firm B will follow it. Thus, firm B will also charge price OP and produce and sell quantity OM. This is because at price OP it can sell OM output like firm A because the demand curve facing each firm is the same. Thus, both the firms will charge the same price OP and sell the same quantity OM. Total output of both firms will equate with total market demand OQ which is equals to OM plus OM at price OP. At price OP, profits earned by A and B would differ while firm A will be maximizing profits by selling output OM at price OP, the profit earning of B will be below the maximum level. Because it earns maximum profits at output OM and price OH, therefore the profits earning of firm B will be less than firm B due to the differences in the cost of production. Moving on to the next topic that is price leadership by dominant firm. The duopoly market witnesses a situation of price leadership by a dominant firm when one firm has substantial share in the market while other firms are of smaller size. To explain the situation, it is assumed that the large firm has the information on the market demand for the product and it is also assumed that the dominant firm knows about the production cost, especially marginal cost of small firms. This implies that the dominant firm has the mechanism to estimate product supply by small firms at different prices. On the basis of above information, the large firm projects its market demand which is explained in this figure. In panel A of this figure, let DD represent market demand curve and SM is the total quantity sold by the small firms. At each price of the large firm has the ability to sell that much quantity in the market which the small firms are unable to supply. In other words, the demand for the product of the dominant firm will be the difference between total demand DD minus total supply SM by the small firms. For example, at price P1, the demand for the product of the leader firm is zero because the entire quantity P1R is supplied by the small firms. As price falls below P1, the demand for leader's product increases. At price P2, total demand is T and small firms supply P2C while the leader firm supplies the remaining part that is CT. At price P3 and below the entire quantity is supplied by the leader firm as the supply by small firms is zero. Thus, below price P3, the entire market demand coincides with the leader's demand curve. In panel B of this figure, the MRL is the marginal revenue curve of the price leader corresponding to his demand curve DL. 
AC and MC are his average cost and marginal cost curves. The dominant price leader will maximize his profits by producing output OQ or we can say PH and setting price OP. The price followers means small firms will sell at price OP and together they will produce PB. It is important to note that the price taker small firms may or may not maximize their profits at price P set by the price leader due to variations in their cost structures. In this figure, quantity PH produced by the leader firm in panel B is equivalent to the demand BS for the leader's product in panel A. It is assumed that the small firms cannot sell more than the quantity shown by the curve SM at any given price. Therefore, if the leader wants to maximize profit, then it will have to ensure that small firms not only follow its price, but also produce required quantity PB at price P. This implies that to retain profit maximizing position, the price leader must have market sharing agreement with small firms because if they produce less output than PB, where the leader will produce at non-profit maximization position. Now move on to the next topic that is non-collusive stable equilibrium. Non-collusive oligopoly is a market where a few number of firms act independently but are aware of each other's actions. Also, the number of players in the market do not provide sufficient evidence about the market competition. However, the dynamism of competition, whether oligopoly leads to an efficient market outcome or not, the market dynamism can be identified by a combination of several factors such as price, quality and product diversity. It is important to note that the oligopolist competition is effective in the presence of certain market features of which some important features are. First is non collusive oligopoly can bring dynamic efficiency in those industries where innovation and investment is associated with substantial risk. Second is competitive pressure can limit the ability of a firm in setting prices above the competitive level. Third is competitive pressure threatens the potential entrant that are attracted either by supernormal profits earned by the oligopoly firms or when the existing firms are less efficient or neglect new technologies. From the aforesaid, it is clear that effective oligopolistic competition increases market efficiency in long run. Now let us discuss simultaneous quantity setting. In many situations of oligopoly markets, the firms take decisions simultaneously without knowing the strategies of their competitors. Therefore, they forecast each other's behavior while making their own choices. In Kuno competition, the firms simultaneously choose to produce their optimal quantity. Simultaneous quantity setting takes place under certain assumptions. First is, there are two firms. Second, each firm produces homogeneous products. Third, both the firms choose their optimal product quantity simultaneously. Fourth is, marginal cost of production are same for both the firms. When there are only two firms in an industry, strategic interaction between them affect each other's profits. This assumption is in contrast with the assumption of perfect competition. The users of game theory formulate a model assuming situations of strategic interaction between the firms. The Kono model can be characterized as a simultaneous move quantity setting to a poly game. The game is played as first both the firms choose their output levels simultaneously without knowing the level of output the rival firm has chosen. Once these quantities are placed in the market, market demand decides the price and each firm calculates its payoffs accordingly. The equilibrium reached in Kono model is the Nash equilibrium in simultaneous move quantity setting to a poly game. An important assumption of the Kono model is that the firms are treated like rational individual decision makers who aim at maximizing their payoffs. In case of oligopoly models, the payoffs are profits and the payoffs received by the players depend on their choice of move. Each type of move is considered as a strategic variable. In the Kono model, quantity is the strategic variable. Each firm decides about product quantity simultaneously and then the market demand curve determines the price at which the output is sold. A best response functions can be used to see what Nash equilibrium will emerge when two firms in an oligopoly choose capacity simultaneously. The last topic of today's discussion is collusive cartels. In a collusive cartel, the oligopolists enter into an agreement to produce limited output in order to maximize profits.
The characteristic of collusive cartel is that all the colluding firms they behave as a single firm and aim at maximizing their joint profits with respect to either price or quantity choice. Therefore, different firms are asked to produce different levels of output in order to minimize total cost. Total cost will be minimized when the various firms in the cartel produce such levels of output at which their marginal costs are equal. If marginal cost of member firms are not equal, then the marginal units of output will be produced at a smaller cost by the firms with a lower marginal cost than those by higher marginal cost. This figure illustrates how a cartel works and determines its price and output. Suppose two firms form a cartel by entering into an agreement. Also suppose that the aim of the cartel is to maximize joint profits of member firms. First, the cartel will estimate total demand for the product. The demand curve for the cartel will be aggregate demand sloping downwards as we can see in this figure curve DD. Marginal revenue curve MR of the cartel will lie below the demand curve DD. Marginal cost curve MCC of the cartel is the horizontal addition of the marginal cost curve of the two firms A and B respectively. MCC is equals to MCA plus MCB and indicate the minimum possible total cost of producing each level of output. It may be noted that each level of industry output will be distributed between two firms in such a way that their marginal costs are equal. Now, the cartel will maximize profits by fixing the output at the level where MR and MCC curves of the cartel intersect each other. So, in this figure MR and MCC curves intersect each other at point R or output OQ. At output OQ, the demand curve DD will determine price equals to QL or OP. After taking decisions to produce OQ level of total output, the cartel will allot production quota for each firm so that the marginal cost of each firm is comparable. This is done by drawing a horizontal straight line from point R towards the y axis. This figure shows that when firm A produces OQ1 and firm B produces OQ2, the marginal cost of the two firms are equal. Thus, the output quota of firm A will be OQ1 and of firm B it is OQ2. Total output will be OQ which is equals to the sum of OQ1 and OQ2. At this level of output, the joint profits of colluding firms of the cartel will be maximized. This figure A shows that with output OQ1 and cartel price OP, the profits made by firm A are equals to PFTK. Similarly, figure B shows that with output OQ2 and cartel price OP, the profits made in firm B are equal to PEGH. Total profits or joint profits made by the cartel are maximized by equating combined marginal cost MCC with the combined marginal revenue MR. Let's summarize at the end. In many situations of oligopoly markets, the firms take decisions simultaneously without knowing the strategies of their competitors. Therefore, they forecast each other's behavior while making their own choices. The situation of quantity leadership occurs when the firms compete on quantity. On the other hand, the price leadership takes place when one firm sets the price and the other firms follow it. While collusive and non-collusive oligopoly are the markets where either few firms behave as a single firm, as are bound to an agreement or acts independently. Thus, today we have discussed price leadership, quantity leadership.